Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a bombshell was dropped in the trial of Crystal Rogers yesterday. And the SOAR Summit announced funding for two water plants in eastern Kentucky. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Madison Carmouche. The time is 6.32, and let's check in with Chief Forecaster Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. I just saw you doing your Friday my happy, happy dance. My Friday happy yeah. dance, exactly. That's one, of our that time. that's one of our traditions here on Mountain News this morning. We hit 6.30, you gotta do our happy dance. But anyway, <laughs> that's off camera. You can't see that at home. Anyway, let's talk about what's going on this morning that you can see at home is the possibility for some rain going on out there this morning. We've got the loop going to kind of give you an idea, or at least a better idea of where the rain is this morning. So again, very widely scattered. Not everybody's seeing it, but it's overcast and dreary for all. I can tell you that. So again, in a line basically from the West Virginia border near uh, Louisa all the way down into East Tennessee, seeing some spotty showers this morning. Whitesburg so far, nothing going on there just yet. 61 overcast skies. Temperatures have not budged. Maybe went down just a degree or two in some locations, but otherwise been in the 50s and 60s all morning. Basically 60 because or above because Grundy and Wise right there. Clintwood is the only cool spot at 57. So we're going to be a slow climb today. 70 maybe a little bit better if we get the skies cleared faster. I do believe they will clear later this afternoon. It just all depends on when and how much. Madison. Brandon, thank you. Prosecutors dropped a bombshell in the Crystal Rogers murder case yesterday saying they believe a gun bought from Nick Hoke was used to kill Crystal Rogers father, Tommy Ballard. Nick Hoke is the brother of Brooks Hoke who is now facing charges for the murder of Rogers. Nick Houck is also a former Bards Bardstown police officer, but was fired for interfering in the Crystal Rogers case. WYMT's Phil Pendleton was in the Nelson County courtroom yesterday and heard from the family members of the victims. Uh, we're gonna bring the family into the, the Nelson County courtroom was full Thursday afternoon with relatives and friends of Crystal Rogers on one side those supporting the accused Brooks Houck on the other. Today feels like a win for us. Houck's appearance in the courtroom was literally small, only yes, filling the middle square and the television in a video Zoom call from the jail. Houck's attorney entered a not guilty plea for him, then launched into arguments on why he believes the $10 million bond is oppressive and unconstitutional. This is a case where not only has he not fled from anything before, but he's known forever that people were saying bad things about him, and yet here he's staying. Crystal Rogers' family says that there's still a lot of unanswered questions, but they say that they do believe justice is finally going to be served, and they feel like more arrests in this case are very likely. Rogers' family was also thrilled to learn a link between her death and that of her father, Tommy Ballard. I will tell you, Your Honor, we're investigating the murder of Tommy Ballard that could potentially be related to this case. Special Prosecutor Shane they Young told the judge they're awaiting test results on the gun used to kill Ballard that they say that they bought from Nicholas Houck. Mr. Ballard, along with Crystal's mother, made it no secret they were desperately seeking answers to her disappearance. I think he was getting close, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, that's the reason they had to get rid of him. Yeah. The judge said he'll make a decision on the motion to lower Houck's bond after reviewing the testimony. In Nelson County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Police have charged a second person, Joseph Lawson, with conspiracy to commit murder and evidence tampering. He will be in court later this month. One person is dead after an incident involving a tractor in Lawrence County. The Lawrence County Deputy Coroner responded to a call before 9 p.m. Wednesday night on the right fork of Irish Creek in Webville community. The Lawrence County Deputy Coroner, along with other first responders, arrived a little after 9.30. 70-year-old William Edward De Deerfield of Webville was pronounced dead at the scene around 10.30 p.m. Two people are behind bars following a traffic stop in Corbin. It happened Thursday morning when officers with Corbin police pulled a car over for
for some unspecified traffic offensive offenses. Deputies later discovered the driver was intoxicated. The driver, 55 year old Teddy Kirby of London, is facing multiple charges, including his fourth DUI, making it a felony. The passenger, 20 year old Sydney Harris of South Shore, is also facing multiple charges. 14 grants were awarded through the Abandoned Mine Lands Economic Revitalization or AMLER program at the 2023 SOAR Summit. Yesterday, I was able to find out more about the money Perry County received. Buckhorn is getting the county's second water plant after a $3.3 million grant. I mean, it's the first day I won the mayor, I talked to Scott, our judge, and I said, what can we do to fix the water situation in Buckhorn? The grant comes after the hard work of those on the grant writing team in the Perry County Fiscal Court. We have a lot of projects that we need to get funded and so when it comes to grant running there's the it's it's a long process to chase money for grants. Mabalini says this funding will cover the cost of transmission lines from the new water plant to the Coalfields Industrial Park. Right now if we can get a million gallons of water there this by this putting this new plant we'll get 1.7 5 million more to, uh, gallons and that way we can recruit more businesses for the industrial park. The ultimate goal of the Amler grant is to help fund projects that will create jobs in areas that have suffered due to changes in the coal industry. Yes, actually in, in the grant application we have to justify that new jobs are going to be created in order to get the funding. So we have job commitments from Dash Core Aluminum that's located in the industrial park and from uh, Foundever, previously known as Sykes. And so altogether we'll have 373 new jobs that will be created over th the next three years. Officials say they hope this expansion will attract new businesses to join the industrial park. The SOAR Summit wrapped up Wednesday. For a list of all of the projects receiving funds, you can go to our website at WYMT.com. The city of Jenkins also received money during the SOAR Summit being awarded more than $300,000 to repair the city's wastewater plant. Mayor Todd DePriest says the facility has not been updated since the 1990s, creating more issues over time. He says getting the funding will allow them to make the needed updates. Just having the funding in place, knowing that it's, you know, it'll be here and that we'll be able to um, focus and concentrate on what needs to be done and, and what pieces needs to be repaired or fixed or replaced or upgraded or whatever it may be. So, so we'll be working with the engineers to, to look at it and make sure we, we use the money wisely and, and get the most out of it. Dupree says the money will be helpful in their efforts to revitalize the city following the July 2022 flood. The first patchy frost of the season could be possible this weekend. Morning temperatures this weekend might be a good 50 degrees cooler than some of the afternoons earlier this week. With the possibility of frost showing up near you, it may be time to start thinking about your plants. For the tropicals, it's probably time to bring those on in. However, if you're in town, this patchy frost, you can still leave outside your gardenias and your waxy leafed house plants for another week or two. You just want to tuck them under a tree canopy so that the leaves are covering them. Pemberton Schmidt says other kinds of plants may need to be treated differently. She adds there may be a point where you will want to keep your plants inside. Six forty here on this Friday morning. We continue to track those bands of rain coming through. This is a front that's basically bringing the wet part of the system. There is the cold front that's going to bring the cold part of the system. There's two fronts actually impacting us right now, and that one is the big one. That's going to bring the colder air, but it's a drier front. Here's the front. It was stalled out. It's actually not even showing up right now, but again, it's basically moving through our region this morning. Somerset, we know that they're getting some rain down that way as we start your day, and again, temperatures kind of stable there in the upper 50s and low 60s. Even Jonesville down, down to 59s. So all of our 50s right now are in southwest Virginia. All of our low to mid 60s are in eastern Kentucky, east Tennessee, and southern West Virginia. Out the door forecast, take your rain gear. You may not need it all day, but you'll need it for parts of the day. Temperatures top out around 70, unless we can get those skies cleared out faster, and then it could get a couple of degrees warmer.
Madison. Thank you for joining us. The time is now 641, still to come on Mountain News this morning. We'll have more on the White House approval for construction of new barriers to keep immigrants from entering the U.S.